Good morning, Peter Gertz here. I'm a psychiatrist and I'm going to talk about something absolutely fascinating again and that is limits of logical thinking. And Kurt Gödel is fascinating to me. He proved that no axiomatic system in mathematics is complete, meaning that at least one true statement is present but cannot be proven. So that to me again is fascinating mind-blowing because it shows that you cannot create any mathematical axiomatic system that proves everything. Um, there's always going to be at least one statement that's true but cannot be proven. Georg Cantor is another mathematician who I find, whom I find fascinating. And he showed that one infinity can be larger than another, which also is mind-blowing, because infinity is infinity, infinite. So how could uh, one infinity be larger than another? But again, Georg Kanter proved it. And to me, again, that's absolutely fascinating, mind-blowing. What he proved is that, for example, the infinity of real numbers is greater, it's a larger infinity, than the infinity of cardinal numbers. So again, the infinity of real numbers is greater than the infinity of cardinal numbers. The cardinal numbers are the numbers um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. I don't want to get into too much detail, but Again, just the principle that one infinity can be larger than another is amazing. Um, so bottom line then, conventional logic may not be adequate to describe our reality on this planet. And conventional logic and thinking may not be adequate to navigate reality then. Another fascinating aspect is that in order to newly create a mathematical proof, you have to use non-logical, which is creative thinking. So it's necessary to use non-logical, creative thinking in order to newly create a mathematical proof, which is some, ends up being something logical, but in order to come up with it, you need to use a non-logical aspect, the creative aspect. Think, so bottom line, what I'm talking about today is we want to respect logic Definitely we want to respect logic, but we also want to realize that it's far from everything in this life. That logic is one part of life that can be useful to us, but it's far from everything. So thinking is often based on experiences. Let's say a child grows up being told by his father, you're never going to amount to anything again and again. Often when that child's an adult, he'll, he or she will have a lot of thoughts uh, similar to that, like, I'm not good enough, it's not worth going to college, I'm too stupid, etc., etc. So a lot of thoughts are negative, non-productive, bring people down. A lot of people spend a lot of energy with thoughts like, my neighbor has a better car, she looks better than me, etc., etc. So thinking can really waste energy, can be negative, can lead to depression. It's certainly not always helpful. And again, there's another side to life, in, at least in my opinion. Let me give you one quick example. Many years ago, I had an old pair of jeans that I had not worn for many years at, the, at that point, and I decided to wear them. And sure enough, that day, I ran into a person, a guy, whom I had not seen since I'd uh, worn those jeans regularly, which was many years previously. So there seemed to be a connection between putting on those jeans and running into that guy. And sure enough, um, a few years later, I hadn't worn the, the jeans again for years, and a few years later, I decided to wear them. And guess what? I ran into the same guy again. And this was in Manhattan. So both times, it's not that likely to actually run into someone in Manhattan. 
So two times I wore those jeans, which I almost never wore, um, and two times I ran into the same guy. So again, to me, that shows that there's something in this world that's non-tangible, non-logical, but very obvious. So feelings, emotions, intuitions can create some balance to logic, and they can be very helpful in making basic decisions like what to wear. There's no logical protocol that's going to tell you exactly what's correct to wear on a given day. You need to wear what feels right to you ultimately. So you can go through all kinds of logical uh, connections and um, thoughts, but you're not going to necessarily come up with the best decision for you on what to wear that day unless you respect your feelings. So feelings are crucial and that goes for other decisions also. Like being a doctor on call, you definitely want to use logic. So if someone calls you about a patient who's in a very acute crisis situation, you want to run through logical things. What could this be? Um, what would be the consequence of this or that? And there are many different scenarios that you're going to have to run through. Um, but ultimately, you're going to have to synthesize everything and go with what feels right in your decision to treat the patient. So even in complex decisions, feelings are crucial. There's no protocol when someone calls you about a patient on what to do with that specific patient at that specific time. So again, you have to respect your feelings and ultimately, you know, you want to get the facts, do the logical part, but ultimately you want to go with, uh, you want to respect your feelings and see what feels right to you as far as making that decision. And respecting our emotions can help us to be in the moment, to be in the body. Um, the feelings are feelings, they're in our body. So being in the body can be helpful in um, making decisions, it can help us to be in the moment, and being in the moment can help with creativity also. And one way of pretty much automatically being, the, being in the moment is in dreams, which is another fascinating aspect. There have been many things that have been created in dreams. Supposedly, Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney wrote the song yesterday in a dream. So um, that's fascinating. And another example is Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist from many years ago. He was wondering about what atoms were like, what the structure of atoms was. And then he had a dream and realized they may be somewhat similar to the solar system like the planets revolving around the sun, the electrons revolving around the nucleus of the atom. So that's how he came up with that. So um, dreams mean that we're automatically in the moment and they can be very productive as far as creativity, like we just said, in music and science. And um, that... Um, is, again, creating that balance between logic and um, feelings, emotions, intuition. So, again, bottom line, we want to respect logic, but it's far from everything. Thank you.